Oh, welcome back. And, you know, this is an exciting show because this is an opportunity for us to connect people. We are creating a network. And there is a lovely, lovely network, network out there called Angel One. And I'd like to introduce you to Karen Grant. And Karen, I, well, I keep telling you, I'm excited about Angel One and about the Angel Network concept. So tell me where the Angel One concept came from. Um, angel One uh, is an angel group, uh, and there are some 13 angel groups in Ontario. And they've been, uh, there have been formal angel groups in the province since 2001, 2000. And the, the concept is if you can get high net worth individuals who have enough business experience that they want to invest in privately held companies, if you can get them to gather together, mm -hmm. they're much more powerful as a group than they are as just individual investors. Mm -hmm. And so the concept came, uh, or Angel One actually took play, uh, came about because I was recruited by a number of local business people to uh, get this angel group going in the Hamilton Burlington uh, uh, area, Oak, uh, yeah. Oakville area. Uh -huh. So uh, that, uh, that happened in 2011, and uh, we, uh, we just kind of took off. We made our first investment in December 2011, wow. and 50 investments later, so here we are, $15 million invested in early stage, uh, exciting growth companies. Wow. Here we are, we've got 95 members of, of uh, people willing to write checks to help uh, uh, an inspired entrepreneur um, start his his uh, his growth yeah well I find it fascinating that you kept it quite local mm -hmm. and the investment well we're going to talk about it later but um, investors invest and then are and then those invest those invested in become investors in some cases and I think that's really fascinating because that really speaks to the quality of the the process that you go through so what is the process if i'm if i'm a well we'll use the word widget because everybody makes widgets apparently if yeah. i'm a widget maker and i'm looking for investors because perhaps i want to take my business to the next level what right. do i do i'm going to call you and go karen hey i yeah. have an idea <laughs> have i got an idea for you <laughs> that's exactly heard that right look. no no <laughs> never um we we have a we we are a fairly disciplined group, and so we have an application process uh -huh. on our website uh, where an entrepreneur can kind of fill in uh, uh, a short uh, executive summary of their business proposition. So, what kind of a widget do you have? What kind? Who are you selling it to? How are you selling it? Is it a consumer play? Is it a business to business play? Um, what are your what's your forecast over the next three years what do you think you'll be able to make um, and uh, and so we ask the entrepreneurs to to do that first because it just kind of gives us a, a base to right. work from right and then uh, the the company will be invited if we think that they could have success if they capture the interest of our members uh, we would invite them in to come in and basically do a dress rehearsal with a screening committee made up of our members mm -hmm. so Companies come in and it's a, they've got 30 minutes and we coach them that they should spend 15 minutes presenting their value proposition using PowerPoint or some tool like that. Be prepared to take questions for another 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> and then if that works out well and our, our, our members say, wow, this looks, really, this looks like it could have success with our group, then we, we schedule them in to present at an investment meeting. Now we have, we've, we typically hold our investment meetings at the DeGroote School of Business, mm -hmm. uh, Ron Joyce Center, or uh, sometimes we have to find a local hotel because, I don't know, <laughs> the students need the room for exams. <laughs> that, <laughs> concept, happens. we get concept, bumped. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Uh, so, uh, um, and we have, we're averaging about 70 people coming out to an investment meeting. Wow. Uh, so we really give the entrepreneurs a really an incredible exposure opportunity. So again, they'd already had the dress rehearsals, so they come in, they make their presentations. We typically have three companies that present our, our meetings, our breakfast meetings. Uh -huh. um, companies present back to back. And then 
we, we thank them and we throw them out the door, <laughs> we close the door, and then we have an internal discussion about them. And I get a show of hands of who wants to meet with them to do what we call a deeper dive the next week, which is already pre-scheduled. And that is where only interested investors come to meet with the company and they crawl under the covers. Uh -huh. And it's a grill session. It really is. It, and it's very exciting, actually. Out of that meeting, um, we'll know how much money the investor is prepared to put in, who's in, who wants to go into formal due diligence, and who the lead investor is. Having a lead investor is crucial. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. to organize the other investors to, you know, maybe you'll make the calls to their customers to just find out what that's about like. Another person might uh, want to go through all of their financial statements and just double check to make sure that that's all in line and right. or that their forecast makes sense and that it actually matches with the rest of the business plan. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of, and sometimes we do technical due diligence if there's a widget involved and we <laughs> want to make sure that really is unique. Uh, so there's a lot of work to, to do. And, uh, and, and the lead investor coordinates all of those players and they all come together and, and they, they provide feedback to the other investors that are interested. So you can imagine there's a lot of right. collaboration that needs to be, be, take place. We can have up to 14 investors that are gonna be, wow. be in a deal. Uh, so, so then once that all happens, uh, we, uh, the, we have a final meeting and the group decides, yep, we're in. We're now hard committing. We're going to wire our money to the to the lawyer, uh, and uh, the lawyer goes through the closing documents. There's a great long closing agenda, and then the company gets the money. Wow! But that's not the end of it because then our members, one of them will end up probably being on the board of directors. A couple of them will probably end up being an advisor to that entrepreneur because the relationship has developed. Right. And yeah. uh, and so. The other thing that uh, happens a lot for us is that we often end up doing two or three rounds of investment into that company. Really? So the exist yeah, the existing co the in existing investors will participate, uh -huh. but the next round is typically more than the uh -huh. first one, mm -hmm. and so they want to bring in more investors. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we've, we just closed a $1.5 million raise in, uh, in a company, and this was the third investment that we've made in this company. Oh we've goodness. put in over $3 million into, that, that, into company. that one company. Locally? Yeah. From local investors? Majority, yeah. You know, they say buy local. <laughs> this is invest local. That's really what it is. And how wonderful is that? So, okay. So, see, this is just so exciting and interesting <laughs> to me that, that people can have this opportunity. You've stayed quiet. You've been behind the scenes. No one's actually known mm -hmm. about your existence or very few people have known about your existence. What, what do the investors feel is in it for them? Hmm. <laughs> no, that's that's an excellent question because I, I and we'll we'll be hearing from one of our yes. members uh, later. Um, but but there are I would say there are two or three things that bring them in. One is, um, and I think I think I think the first and second reason could be it it the the priority flip flops with right. the individual yeah. and the time. Some of them are doing this to give back to the community. There's a philanthropic element to it, but that's not their primary reason. There is also um, wanting to invest in exciting companies and the thrill of helping those companies grow better, bigger, better, faster. Right. right. So, and, and quite honestly, I think those two priorities, not war, but they, they get that double motivation. So they want to give back to the community they want to get involved with a young and exciting company, and they want to make a lot of money. Right, right. So all three of those, those factors are, are things that motivate them. Yeah. And then the other element, I think, uh, I think angel investors come to us for two reasons as well as the, the ones I just mentioned. One is they want to expand their community of like-minded people. They, mm -hmm. want to, they want to expand their community of fellow investors. Very often, uh, people come to us and they already have four or five friends that they invest in. Well, now all of a sudden, they have 80 other people they can invest with. And okay. that, makes, that makes it completely different. Right. 
Okay. And our members come, I mean, we've got the past corporate council for Labatt's. We've got the uh, past president of, uh, oh gosh, I, I can't, I've run out of how many companies that we've got past presidents of. Uh, they, 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 they are ex, ex, uh, very, very successful cashed out entrepreneurs, very successful corporate folks. We've got lawyers, we've got accountants, and I don't mean little accountants, I mean big accountants. We've got partners in all kinds of firms that mm -hmm. are all members. So who really mm -hmm. truly understand the value of investment, not just from a not just from an investor's point of view, but from someone who is looking for investment. So they're not coming to the table raw, they're coming to the table mm -hmm. with a knowledge base from their own successes. Well, I think, it, we're, again, a little bit later in the show, we're going to hear from somebody that can, has the perfect story of absolutely having gone through, having, having raised money from strangers, from right. angel investors, and now being a very active angel in his own right. Yeah, uh, yeah there's, we have a number of people in our group that have negotiated very big deals, that have started up companies, that have successfully grown them and sold them. Um, some that are still very successfully running their own businesses yes. yeah. uh, and uh, and you know some of them have had huge export experience so there's a massive amount of experience uh, and contacts around the table right. uh, that uh, that can all come to help a early stage entrepreneur uh, grow better and faster right Thank you for the introduction to our next guest. When we come back, we are going to introduce you to someone who has been invested in and is now investing. Angel on both sides. We'll be right back. Oh, welcome back. Well, most of you have heard of audiobooks, and this is Sanjay Singal and Sanjay, audiobooks is you, your company, and you grew that company thanks to the Angel Network. Uh, absolutely, angels were instrumental in how we grew that company. Uh, I think most companies always start, you know, you have an idea, you have a friend that you want to start it with, and you go get $10,000 from your credit cards, friends and family, but eventually you need m serious money, like yeah. the Twenty thousand, two hundred thousand, half million dollars, and that's where angels can really come in uh, and be helpful, both, both as an entrepreneur as I was at the outset, and then now looking at potential investments and deciding who to help. So, how did you first hear about the Angel Network or uh, Angel Life? Uh, you know, angels. I went to business school. I mean, it was a long time ago now, but in business school, the concept of angels is there because it's part of an investment class. Angel investing has a much higher rate of return than, um, say. Uh, public markets or, or um, certainly in putting into a checking account or, right. or GICs right. and it typically returns about 30 percent but you have to have an enormous tolerance for risk because that investment is going to go uh, uh, up and down. So you know we knew about it as an investment class and then when I started my first business shortly after graduating from business school firsthand I got a taste of angels because I went to a bunch of my professors and asked them to invest in my business, which was a disaster. I won't even tell you what, what <laughs> happened. I lost $100,000 of other people's money. Wow. Um, but, and this goes to the character of angels and why they invest. When the business went under, I called them up to say, I'm so sorry, um, I lost that money. And to a person, they all said, are you okay? They didn't say wow. you, right? But it, it was yeah. more that, are you okay? Because they were investing in me not my idea, it was they wanted to help support me. And that's what happens with angels in general. Now, as an investor, uh, I'll see somebody, I think they've got a good idea, but they really have the enthusiasm uh, and, and energy to make a business successful. That's what makes me invest. And I think that's true of most angels. Yeah. That's really interesting that you would, you would uh, explain it from that standpoint, because usually people look at an investment go, okay, What's my ROI? And mm -hmm. uh, and off we go. And you, you, or at least the perception is that people are doing it to make a bunch of money back. And you know how that happens. Who the heck knows? And really, who cares? But for you, and certainly involved with uh, the angels, having in, angels invest in you, 
you've had a whole different experience than what someone would typically expect. So tell me about when you had your first investment. How did you feel going to the Angel Network the very first time, do you remember? Well, going to an Angel Network like Angel One, the very first time is very vivid. It was the Toronto Angel Group mm -hmm. uh, in 2004. And in fact, um, Karen Grant, who was here mm -hmm. earlier, was actually uh, running that organization as well. And so when we went in front of them, which was a downtown Toronto uh, angel group, we got to pitch extremely nerve wracking. My partner and I had no idea what to expect. It was a big room with stuffed chairs and, and a bunch of serious looking people sitting around smoking cigars. That's the, the feeling we got. <laughs> and uh, did our presentation and then the next day they called us up and said, you know, there's four people who are interested in investing in your business. They want to visit your building see what you're all about. So then a week later, they came out to visit. Two of them bowed out at that point, uh, and the other two said, sure, we'll, we're going to invest. And they gave us uh, half a million dollars wow. at that point, but just between the two of them. Wow. Then over the following five years, the business did well. And between them and some earlier angels that we had, they all did extremely well on their, on their investments. Uh -huh. And then that business is my business now. So that was an audiobook business back then. It's evolved and grown since then in, in, uh, in many ways. But now that business has become so successful that I'm able to go back and invest in businesses now through Angel One and through people who just know me and know that I invest in, in companies. So as a, we'll talk about the angel side of it, as an angel in a room with other angels, you must feel a sense of um, camaraderie, oh, and you absolutely. must feel a sense of almost security and reliance because you've got the opinion of many other people. So when someone like me, as we were using in the other example, comes in and is looking for an investment, what is it that you might be looking for that maybe someone else isn't, do you think? Well, my expertise is in e-commerce, web, internet stuff in general, mm -hmm. but out of the 70 people who are in the room at any given time for an angel presentation, everyone has different domain expertise. Karen was mentioning there's lawyers, there's insurance mm -hmm. people, there's accountants, but there's also people from the medical industry, from the beverage industry, from the automotive industry. And one of our most fun investments has been in a uh, company, uh, Karen was referring to it, that we'd raised one and a half million for. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, uh, Vita is the name of the company. They've developed a new type of catalytic converter. And that requires a strong automotive background. Well, I know nothing, you know, I, I barely know how to drive my own car, sorry. <laughs> I, uh, and, uh, but one of the people in the room who was sitting at the next table over from me knew some people at Ford Engineering. And he said, this seems like an interesting idea. Why don't I call my buddy at Ford and see what he thinks? Without that person's domain expertise, we would never have made the investment. Right. But as it was, it became one of our favorite uh, companies to invest in. And there's somebody, there's always somebody in the room. Right. Who knows that business? Right. How many investments have you made? Wow. Do you remember? Nineteen is 19. the number. Nineteen. In yeah. how long? In how many years? Ten years. In ten years. Yeah. Okay. But I'll be very. I track my investments very carefully. My rate of return is sixty-eight percent compounded year over year for ten years. Oh my. Right. Oh my. So that's what you can do as an angel. I got lucky. I had three home runs out of nineteen investments. Some of them could yet be home runs. I don't know, Vita comes to mind. Yeah. But there's a lot, so a lot of dogs in there. Wow, wow. So, okay, how do you, hmm. okay, how many, how, <laughs> yeah. how many of the 19 did you say uh, kind of was a mistake maybe? Oh, I, all of the ones that didn't work out, so 12? 12 um, didn't work out. Yeah, some of them were, seemed like a good idea at the time. So I could go back and say, okay, I, I understand why I made that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also see why I shouldn't have made the decision. Mm -hmm. But almost every time when I had regrets, it was because of the individual I invested in, not because okay. of the idea. When, when the going got tough, they ran or they collapsed. Okay. And that's when I feel bad. It's like I was a bad judge of character on that. Not the idea. I, it's not my idea. I can't be that good a judge of it. I mean, okay. everybody thought Twitter was really silly right. uh, at the outset. <laughs> Um, nobody would have invested in it based on the idea, but then right. um, the number of people who turned down Uber as an investment yeah. is, is shocking. Yeah. So it's not the idea, it's the team behind it that can, can pivot or 
adjust the ideas as they encounter difficulty. And, and unfortunately, we invest in people sometimes that can't deal with that. So this comes right back to what you said about the very first investors that you had. They were more concerned about you than the money that they had lost. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in order to be angel investors, especially part of Angel One, you have to be accredited, which means you have to have $200,000 a year in net income or a million dollars. You, you have to be able to write a million dollar check, which means you're savvy enough to be able to make an investment like this and know what you're getting into. Right. So when one of our investors writes a $25,000 check and loses it, that shouldn't, that should be like, hmm, right? right? It happens. Right. Uh, nobody should be like not able to make their mortgage payments based on right. that kind of a loss. Right. So if you're looking to make an investment as an angel, you really need to be quite prepared that your investment might not pay off. Quite prepared is a good way to put it, yes. <laughs> and quite prepared to celebrate those that do. Yes. And encourage those people to then take a look at becoming an angel? I don't think we need to encourage them. It's automatic. When, once you've succeeded, first of all, you have a lot of money, and, uh, and you al they almost always want to give some of that back into the entrepreneurial startup community. And angels really exist at the front end of that, of that investment path. Once you get to, normally when you get to a million dollars or more, you're not talking angels anymore. Angel One has shown some real ability to raise money at that level. And hopefully we'll be able to continue that kind of success. How much time do you spend on tracking the investments that you have? Or, in, or investing your energies into the mentoring part of that? Oh, I thought you were you asking me how long I spent counting my money. Oh, um, <laughs> no, no, I won't ask that no. yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, mentoring, uh, I would go with just a few hours a week. Depends okay. on the investment, of course. And, and in one occasion, I made an investment and ended up joining that company full time, which happens a lot as well, because you are already an expert in the domain of that company. If they become successful and need um, gray hair, uh, so to speak, <laughs> then, then it's, the angel investor is quite often the person who steps up and, right. and can run the company. Uh, wh who do you think right now, what are the industries or the, the, um, the type of businesses that angels are interested in uh, looking at to invest in? Or, or conversely, which are the ones that angels would not be interested in looking at? Yeah, I can, I can make all kinds of broad generalizations on this, like hardware, things in foreign countries, uh, meaning not the US, but say China, um, are things that are of less interest, but it's just not true. When you look at the investments we've made, the, probably the most, the two broadest categories that we do invest in are medical products and uh, or medical technology and software uh, products. Okay. That's true of startups in general, so sure. we're not particular about where we invest. Right, right. What would you suggest would be what would as being as being someone who has had investments in your businesses, what would your strongest suggestion be to someone who's watching right now and says, "You know what? I think that I maybe want to make a connection with them and make a presentation. What would be your suggestion on how they should proceed? Well, I think they should contact you and <laughs> leverage your uh, knowledge now of the, the angel investment community. Yeah, there we go. Uh, in general, it's... Very it's good. <laughs> well, go to the Angel One website. Sure. And, uh, and get the contact information there, fill out an application, and we'll be in touch. Yeah, okay. So there's no secret to success. I, no, there is a secret to success. It's okay. absolutely... It's, it's the people you get to know, the connections you make. You're going to be much more successful as an entrepreneur if when you need to raise money, that's not the first time you've ever talked to that person. The best investments I've ever made are people who I've known for years who know that I'm an angel. And when they need money, then they come to me and say, by the way, I, I know you like investing in companies. Can I show you something? That's how you should be as an entrepreneur. Start that networking now and get to know those people now. We're all happy to, to meet lots of uh, you know, enthusiastic people. Perfect. Thank you so much for telling your stories. See, there really are angels out there. We'll be right back after this.